We have signed on to many international covenants and conventions. Once we sign on to them, they become our covenants. They're not just something out there with the international community. None of these human rights conventions are respected through the PTA and they will not be respected through the uh, Anti-Terrorism Act as well. So I think uh, that we cannot replace uh, one poisonous piece of legislation with a more poisonous piece of legislation. President's Council Jeffrey Algaratnam commented on the fundamental issues in the ATA. First of all, the ATA Act itself suffers from a bad definition of terrorism. A very broad, wide definition which can catch up anything and anybody. That's the first fundamental problem. The next problem is, the significant problem is, now all this is given, the powers of a detention order are given to a DIG. Now we know, we have the highest rates of police impunity in the world, torture of persons in custody. We know the police force has been the tool of the politician. So when the police force does not enjoy that confidence, why do you give it to a DIG to impose a detention order and you can go up to 12 months? Right? Previously it was the Secretary of Defense. The clamor for so many years has been to abolish the presidency. Why do we want now to give that, that so-called presidency which we want to abolish greater powers, also the Attorney General here, become some sort of a puppet in the hands of the executive. Because the Attorney General can, if a person is prepared to plead to a lesser offence, not causing death or murder, can send him for rehabilitation up to 20 years. So if you're under the threat of being locked up indefinitely and you say, no, I will say I'm sorry, I will accept a lesser offence, you can be sent to rehabilitation. And who's going to rehabilitate you? The army and the police. The Anti-Terrorism Act should not come into effect and we can do without it. The repeal of the PTA is necessary. Transparency International Sri Lanka also called for the repeal of the proposed bill. Uh, it is clear that these provisions uh, have been made not really to target and uh, penalize or prevent acts of terrorism, but rather to to have to uh, confer a broad range of uh, power well above already what the executive has to basically curtail civic space, curtail all types of uh, democratic rights that. Uh, we essentially need call upon the government to actually not go forward with this and actually to uphold the international standards that it is saying that it will because actually this act goes against all international standards. A good criminal law needs to be narrow and specific so that actually the judiciary or the lawyers can identify uh, the wrongdoer. The retired president bishop of the Methodist Church stressed no one can curtail the freedom enjoyed by the people. We have just now celebrated the single Tamil New Year and everybody seems to be in a very anesthetized mood. And this is the very moment that there seems to be an attempt to perform a major surgery on the freedom and the democratic space of the people of our land. Religion will never stand for terrorism. We stand for peace, harmony. But it does not mean that a government, a ruler, or any other authority in a country should be given a free hand to curtail the freedom of the people by bringing in wrongful laws to the country.